Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim, fill that out and that's it. Okay, I always like to start with something interesting. And let me tell you, I don't know if you've been tracking the news, but there are just a ton of layoffs in the tech world. So far this year, 2023, we have almost 20,000 tech jobs that have been cut. In 2022, almost 100,000 jobs, 18,000 for Amazon, 11,000 over at Meta, 9,000 people are at Salesforce, uh, Twitter, you know, 3,700 at any given day, it seemed like. But the reason why I bring this up is not just because you should know what's going on inside the tech industry, but big news today is about Tim Cook. The headline is, Apple CEO Tim Cook voluntarily took a 40% pay cut in 2023. 40% pay cut. So after he took the 40% pay cut, how much do you think Tim Cook is making per year? Okay, he is Apple's CEO, obviously major league successful company. How much do you think he's making this year? Uh, I'll tell you, $49 million in total compensation for the year 2023. Imagine making $49 million a year. Wow. You know, it must have been really hard taking over for Steve Jobs, though, as he did. It reminds me of that old Steve Jobs joke, okay? Here, you can tell this one to your family members and friends. So Steve Jobs, he goes to heaven. And as he steps up to the pearly gates, St. Peter looks at him with a frowny face and says, Steve, you know how we feel about apples up here. Okay, get it? (laughs) You know, sometimes I just crack myself up. Hey, welcome to the nation's largest a show about all things digital. It's an award-winning show, as a matter of fact. And I'm America's digital goddess, Kim Commando, here with you once again. And you're about to get more tech smarts because everything is tech nowadays. And if you're a new listener, welcome. And if you're a regular listener, welcome back. And let me tell you, you can find the Kim Commando Show on over 420 top radio stations throughout the United States. And if you're ever looking for your local station, make sure you hit commando.com and use that station finder. It's really super handy. And then we're streaming in your favorite radio app. Just search for my last name, Commando, of course. And then you can get the show as a podcast, as a webcast, all three hours. Use the message boards, get help. And then you can sign up right now over at getkim.com. So support our programming, support what we do. If you've learned one thing, just cost just a couple of bucks a month. Head over to getkim.com. And we've got discounts for seniors, service personnel, uh, military, former serving and a whole bunch more. Let me tell you, you can just get a discount over at getkim.com. And our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 is the way to join us. All right, every single day I visit at least 30 different websites to keep you guys and gals up to date. And this is part of the show where I'd like to talk about some brands, some websites, how some things may be trying to scam you and what you need to watch out for. And also maybe some new products. And number one, we're going to start with, if you order dog food on Amazon, you might get a surprise. What? Yes. A guy in Arkansas opened up a box he thought was filled with all of his little puppy's dog food. But instead, the box, he received 65 illegal license plates. Imagine that. You just want dog food. And instead, you get 65 illegal license plates. Guys sit there going, this doesn't make sense. So he got the police involved, and they started this huge investigation. Now, since November, as it turns out, Amazon has been working with Homeland Security to kind of figure out what's going on with this global narcotics ring that's that's using its name to ship meth under the guise of decorative stones. That's right, like the little stones you put on the paths. (laughs) Talk about getting stoned. Now it seems criminals are doing the same thing with license plates and dog food. So... Investigators have found at least five different vendors that are using Amazon to ship narcotics all around the world. If it happens to you, call the cops. Next in our list, self-driving does not mean that it's safe driving. If you think that Tesla's self-driving mode works, aside from all the people that are getting killed by using it, uh, this just happened. A Model S in full self-driving mode going over the San Francisco Bay Bridge. Tons of traffic. Stops just abruptly stops. Okay. Thankfully, nobody died, but it was an eight-car pileup, injured nine people, including a two-year-old kid. Now, what's ironic about this is that this was just hours after Elon Musk announced that Tesla's full self-driving feature was available all throughout the United States. It's fabulous. It works. You're going to love it. 
Uh, not so much. I have to tell you, I bought a Tesla. I put a few hundred miles on it. It was a Plaid. I sold it. It is not a great car. It it it, it feels cheap. I mean, it doesn't even work with Apple CarPlay. And it was a shame about the Tesla driver that crashed while he was watching a movie. He really should have been watching the trailer. Mm. All right, number three, Apple takes another swipe at Google if you're using Apple Maps. Finally, finally, Apple is getting some of the features that Google Maps has had for many, many years. We're talking about new photos with businesses, buttons, promotions, kind of like what pops up when you are using Google asking it for directions. You can do in-app uh, reservations now. There are photos of location. You can order directly from your phone. And Apple says that th that this is going to change the experience for everyone forever. Well, until Google makes another update, and then we have to go ahead and do that piggyback again, Ab what Google has and Apple has. And then Samsung is also in the mix. Oh, I'll tell you. Uh, number four on our list is a term that you need to know. It's called ghost kitchens. That's right, the International House of Ghost Kitchens. If you ever use DoorDash or any of the food ordering apps, uh, I know in Phoenix, there's a place on Indian School near 44th Street that has uh, six Thai restaurants inside one Thai restaurant. So what the restaurants do is that they create all these sub-restaurants. And so when you go to order, you think you're ordering from someplace else because it has a different name when actually you're ordering from the same place. But maybe the prices are different. And so on TikTok, there is a video that was going viral about ghost kitchens operating out of an IHOP. What? Yes. Uh, the video has 2.1 million views. And what do you think some of the names of the IHOP restaurants are, are the ghost restaurants? Okay. How about Super Mega Dilla? Okay, I guess so. I thought this one was actually cute. Thrilled Cheese. Thrilled Cheese. Uh, let's see. There are others. In Chili's, they have a ghost kitchen called It's Just Wings. And then there's Cosmic Wings. Where do you think Cosmic Wings is operating out of? Okay. Applebee's. Uh, the Burger Den is really Denny's. And uh, by the way, for our younger listeners, IHOP, it is not an internet brewery. It's not. It's the International House of Pancakes. And finally, this coming in at number five. Yes, your boss is really watching you when you're working at home. One third, to, one third of medium to large U.S. companies have some way that they are checking in on their remote from home employees. Microsoft says that 85% of business leaders say they question if hybrid or remote workforces were actually productive. So what's happening is that remote employees are developing these special skills. Like, for example, you open a PowerPoint slide to make it look like you're presenting. Okay, then people think you're working. Uh, how about keeping your mouse moving? Some people are connecting their mouses up to fans <laughs> to make it look like their mouse is uh, still doing something. There's also these mouse jigglers. They are a device that you put your mouse on, and it kind of moves the mouse around, and it looks like you're not away from the screen. Uh, one on Amazon has over 9,000 five-star reviews. Wow, I'll tell you. You know, my job allows me to work from home, but I still go to the office. You know why? Because I, I like the idea of surrounding myself with some company. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, coming up, how you can get Microsoft Office and these other big programs for free. And then we've got a great tip on how you can keep track of all your streaming shows. Oh, and our money tip this week is all the off-the-wall ways that you never thought of that you can be making a buck while you're sitting there at home. And, of course, we have all of your phone calls. And then you have me, Kim Command. How'd you like to hear about how I saved $456 in just five minutes? I used an app called Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Can you remember all the free trials and all the other random subscriptions that you've signed up for? Of course you don't, and that's what they're banking on. I love that with Rocket Money, I can see all of my subscriptions in one place. Then if I see something I don't want, I just tap to cancel, and I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things that you just don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash Kim. That's rocketmoney.com slash Kim. Rocketmoney.com slash Kim. 
Hey, our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 is the way to join us. And hey, you can always drop me your question over on our website. That's commando.com. And on the top right-hand corner, yeah, it's old school, but I like it. There's a link that says email cam. That's where I read every single note that you send me. All right, how about we get started with Wayne in Springfield, Missouri. Hi, Wayne. Hi, Kim. <clears throat> I can't believe I'm actually talking to you. I've been listening no. to you for probably since the late 90s uh that's yeah i've been around that long i've been doing this is this is what you call uh an overnight success wayne <laughs> okay <laughs> well um what i was calling about was i'm kind of a third a third party in this um okay. i've got a friend who, who gave me a call she has a friend who is married to a military veteran um okay. And they've been married, I guess, for 27 years. Uh, he was deployed over into the Middle East, uh, Iraq and Bosnia. And during that time, he got uh, received a TBI, uh, traumatic traumatic uh, brain injury, and came back uh, cha- a changed man. Uh, so sad. He's kind of a yeah. Uh, he's uh kind of explosive uh controlling and alcoholic and anyway basically uh, she's been putting up for this uh with this for years and finally has just kind of woken up and started asking for help she, she asked my friend uh, she's helping her with some problems and they came to me for some technical advice and i'm done a little research and uh, uh the problem is uh he's tracking her iphone you know, with an iPhone, he has an iPhone, you know, probably anxious, wondering where she is, what she's doing, controlling, like you said. Uh, yeah. you, you know, it, it's, it gets pretty hard to block somebody on an iPhone if the other person has an iPhone and they want to make sure that that tracking is done. Because mm-hmm. she can turn off location services, you know this, by going to settings, privacy, location, right? You turn it off. Okay. Right. Uh, she can she can turn off share my location, but let me tell you, when he goes to find out where she is and he can't find her, he's going to blow up. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know him, but I think that's what it is, right? Yeah, Possibility, that's right? Yeah, okay. yeah. He if she forgets her iPhone at home, then he gets really upset. So that's how she's probably figured out that yeah, he's tracking her. Okay, uh, she can remove her iCloud account. Okay, but if her husband has the credentials. He can still go online and say, find my through his iCloud account and be able to see her. She could factory reset the phone. She could be careful of installing apps. But this guy's still going to go crazy if he doesn't know where she is. Yeah. So yeah. what what is it? Is she is is she in a situation where she needs to go to, uh, you know, the, the domestic violence hotline, anything like that? Is she is her safety in jeopardy? Um. It might be a little bit, but uh, my friend's handling that side of it with uh, okay. getting her a little, you know, some legal help and, and uh, an exit strategy, stuff like that. So well, I, I would pass. A, no, and I, I wish I had a better answer. Um, mm-hmm. I would encourage her whatever phone she has is make sure that she knows how to use emergency SOS. Just hit the uh, power button or iPhone five times and then it will it will get her some help. Um, and in addition to that, Wayne, there's a, there's a new feature in the new iOS. It's called Safety Check. And this is made precisely for this situation where if you are in a relationship situation where you need to be able to cut all ties, Safety Check does an emergency reset and it cuts off all other devices, anybody who had access to her account, it shuts off her location data, changes her passwords, and uh, locks everybody out of her iCloud account. And where it is, in case you want to share it with her or when it comes time, it's settings, privacy, and security, and then it's called safety check. Okay. So did I at least help you out? Yeah, the last two things uh, could come in handy in case he needs to – you know, make an exit and cut all ties. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's the best. I, I think that's the best you could do. I I couldn't find anything either. Uh, 
Yeah, but, the only other, you know, another app you might want to put on her phone, uh, we've got links to them over at the website, is like one's called Kite String and another one's called Panic Button. Um, actually, there's a few apps I should tell you about. Um, the the Kite String, the Panic Button, they pretty much work the same way. It's really geared for if you're walking through a dark parking lot and what you do is you hold down the virtual panic button on your phone and if you let go of the button, then it calls 911 or alerts emergency contacts. Uh, there's also some apps that are put out by the National Domestic Violence Hotline, some apps that let's say she was trying to look things up on her phone and mm -hmm. instead of her using Google, she uses another app and the app doesn't – I'm not sure exactly what it is. They changed the name of the app obvious for obvious reasons periodically. Uh, mm -hmm. But the last time I looked at it, it was an, it looked like a news app, but it had a hidden browser so that if you want to look things up, that if whoever picked up your phone, they wouldn't see what you were looking up. Okay. So, okay. so there are so there are some apps like that. Let me let me put together some uh, some tools for you, and for everybody else, we'll put together a list of apps and maybe some ideas. Uh, really hard, hard, obviously very difficult situation that you're in, Wayne. And if there's Anything that I can do, if you want me to talk to your friend of a friend and maybe walk her through one-on-one -on, -one on some of these options that she could take on her phone or burner phones, I, I'm more than happy to do that offline, off the air, just one-on-one, -on -one, me and her. Just, just let me know. And again, thank you for your call. All right. If you're paying for Microsoft Office or Adobe Photoshop, why? Instead of paying for Microsoft Office, you can check out LibreOffice. It's absolutely free. It has a word processor, spreadsheets, presentations, databases, and more. Or you can check, take a look at Google Drive. Adobe Photoshop, super expensive. Uh, the free photo ed editor GIMP is really, really good. And if you are using Adobe Illustrator, also a pricey program, you can save a lot of money by using Inkscape instead. We have links to all of those over at commando.com. Stay right where you are. We have a great tip about five off-the-wall ways to make money you don't want to miss here on the Kim Commando Show. How'd you like to hear about how I saved $456 in just five minutes? I used an app called Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Can you remember all the free trials and all the other random subscriptions that you've signed up for? Of course you don't, and that's what they're banking on. I love that with Rocket Money, I can see all of my subscriptions in one place. Then if I see something I don't want, I just tap to cancel, and I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things that you just don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash Kim. That's rocketmoney.com slash Kim. Rocketmoney.com slash Kim. All right, yes, I'm calling it Commanding the Tech World Trivia because we've all seen how the world has changed because of technology. But you may not know the backstory, the insider secrets that makes this in digitally connected world just go round and round like this. What was the first message sent over the Internet, the very first message sent over the Internet? Well, it happened on October 29th, 1969. The message was supposed to say log in, L-O-G-I-N, but there was a glitch, and only the first two letters were sent between a guy at UCLA and a guy at Stanford, and it was L-O. And then after the message was sent, the whole system crashed. So when playing Commanding the Tech World Trivia, you need to really think. Think beyond just the headlines. And our very special guest contestant and victim joining us this week is going to get a most valuable prize. It's the Kim Commando Show official fanny pack. And Daryl in Moscow, Idaho. Hello there, Daryl. Hi, Kim. How are you doing? Have you ever shopped on Amazon.com? Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> I think we all have, right? All right. So <laughs> yeah. today's trivia question is all about Amazon. Okay. Let me give you some fun facts first about Amazon. It was founded in 1994 by Jeff Bezos in his garage as what? An online bookstore, right? And now it's, of course, one of the largest e-commerce companies in the world. Now, the first book ever sold on Amazon, don't worry, I'm not going to ask you what it was, 
But just in case you're ever on Jeopardy, that answer is fluid concepts and creative analogies, right? Computer models are the fundamental mechanisms of thought by Douglas Hofstadter. Okay. (laughs) All right. We don't ever remember that. But the thing about, but the thing that I'm bringing up is the first word of Amazon. I mean, the first company name. What before it was going to be called Amazon, Jeff Bezos and the gang, they came up with another word that they wanted to call it. And they wanted to call it Kadabra, like abracadabra, but just Kadabra. But they changed it because of which reason? So here's your answers. You have you have to get guess whether it's A, B, C, or D is the right answer. Okay. What was the reason okay. behind the change of the name from Kadabra to Amazon? Was it A, Jeff didn't like the way it was spelled or how it sounded? B, they weren't able to get every domain name for it in every single country. C, he actually traveled to the Amazon with his wife, and he was saying how huge and expansive it is, and that's what kind of company he wanted. Or D, he realized that the word cadabra had no meaning or association with books, because remember, he was just selling books at the time. So... What was the reason behind the change of the name from Kadabra to Amazon? Oh, man. Okay, I'm going to take a stab at it, and I'm going to say B. That, so, so B was that he couldn't get every domain name in every single country. So that's your final answer? Yeah. Okay. Well, you're not right. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh... Uh, the answer is A, Cadabra. Oh. He said it sounded too much like cadaver. So he didn't want to have a company called cadaver. <laughs> so instead, he called it Amazon. And if you ever look at the logo for Amazon, you notice that there's an arrow underneath. And uh-huh. it, the arrow points from A to Z, meaning that they sell everything from A to Z. Uh, oh. Some other fun facts for you is that uh, their net sales in 2020, that was their latest financial results that I was taking a look at, uh, $386 billion, okay? just a little tiny company uh, that was founded in his garage, and they have almost 900,000 employees. Whoa. Wow. Big time. Wow. Big time. All right. So I'm sorry you didn't win an official Kim Commando show fanny pack, Daryl, but better luck next time. But thanks for playing along. Now, I know you have a question for me, so how can I help out? Yes, I do. I'm, um, well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for your program. I'm not very uh, illiterate in this stuff, so I'm learning, though, with the help of you and your show. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. So my, my question is, uh, I'd like to try and find an app for my phone that translates Spanish, like Spanish into English, mm-hmm. but not only translates it, I, um, I can use my earbuds. You know, instead of just reading it, it'll translate in my ear. Okay. And, I'm and what, are you, what are you using now? Uh, I tried Google Translate, and that's about the only one I've tried. And what don't you like about it? Um, when it translates into my earbuds, you know, the voice, mm-hmm. it's way, it's way, <laughs> um, it takes a long time for it to do that because I can read it and then it waits a little bit and then I hear the voice translating it and I just, okay. it doesn't keep up with the person speaking. Um, sometimes when that happens, it could not necessarily be the app. Because before I give you another app, I just want to make sure that you're, you have all the other variables taken care of. Like, for example, mm-hmm. you have to be close enough to the speaker, uh, mm-hmm. the, the Spanish-speaking person, so that it can readily identify it. Because if it's, I don't know, it seems to me it's, if it's five or six feet away, that it may not necessarily pick up every nuance and it tries to fill in the blanks from what it's not hearing or what it's not picking up. Because it may not be close enough. The mic may not just be close enough to them. Sometimes if you have a bad internet connection, that could also be a problem. Because keep in mind, this is translating, you know, using the internet. And accordingly, the same way if you're on a bad Wi-Fi connection or a low Wi-Fi connection. So is any of that, are any of those scenarios happening possibly? Um, Well, this last time I was sitting right by the person. So I know that's not it. Um, The... 
Wi-Fi, I'm not sure. I'll have to check into that. Yeah. And the internet connection. Um, you know, if possible, what you can also do is put a better microphone on the Spanish speaker or like a wireless lav mic. And they're not very expensive. And I can send you some links to some. Uh, but as far as some other options, in case you do want to try it, there's Microsoft Translator. And they do over 60 languages, including Spanish to English. You can also download language packs for offline use. So you don't have to worry about that connection. Uh, there's also Reverso. There's iTranslate. Uh, there's something called Spanish Translate. But I think before we send you down the road of like Spanish Translate or iTranslate, try Microsoft Translator because that might mm -hmm. work best for you. And then again, just see if maybe it could be the cell connection or maybe it's a bad Wi-Fi connection. And, and as you said, you're sitting pretty close. So, But this Google Translate, I'm telling you, if you have never tried it, oh my gosh, folks, you are so missing out. In addition to that, it also you can translate on the web too. Just go to translate.google.com. But as far as these real-time conversations, this is stuff of science fiction. And it's so thrilling that we are here in a time when you can actually use it. Daryl, thank you so much for your call, and better luck next time. I know you can win. Okay, I don't know if I should tell this joke. I think it is so funny. It's not risque, but maybe some people will say, oh, I can't believe you told that joke, Kim Commando. But since we're talking about translation, okay, it's my show. I can tell the joke. Okay, you ready? What's the German translation for bra? What's the German translation for bra? Anybody? Stop them from flopping. <laughs> All right. Which worst thing you can do is go on Google. You've heard me say this before and search for like, how do I make money online? And we've got tons of lists on the website, but we're going to take it in a different direction this week. We have some, we have five off the wall ways that maybe you never thought of before uh, how you can make money online. Number one, you can babysit kids. I'm not talking about you having to go there and actually sit next to the kids to babysit them. There is now the Virtual Babysitter's Club. And what you have to do is entertain the kids with dances and artwork. Maybe you read them a book, game show, puppet shows. And maybe just think of other ways that you can entertain the kids for an hour. And how much you're going to make is about, mm, I don't know, maybe $18 to $20 an hour. Uh, number two on our list is you can make money by losing weight and get healthy at the same time. Now, you're not going to make a ton of money. There's healthy wage. Uh, there's Diet Bet. That's where you start or join a weight loss challenge on the site and you earn cash based on whether or not you make it. Uh, Stick K is an app for you to doing things like exercising or maybe even completing a marathon. Maybe that could be a goal of yours this year. Uh, number three on our list is very strange. I've never understood it, but people are making a lot of money doing it. They eat food on social media and other people watch them while they're eating their food. It's a it's a big deal in Korea, by the way. It's called the mukbang trend. And YouTubers will film themselves eating 20 burgers as a challenge. I'm not saying that this is really a good idea, but if you want to learn more, we've got some links and also have you some steps on how you can create your own YouTube channel. Number four on our list, you can play Dungeons and Dragons and make money online. Uh, you can make up to $125 an hour. What you do is you have to become a dungeon master or a master storyteller. I'll tell you more about that on the website. And number five is you can teach classes about your passions, whatever it may be. Maybe you're an expert at sewing or at woodworking or business leadership or a motivational speaker. You can get started over at teachable.com. And if you're teaching a class, you can, you can charge a premium. Maybe it's $100 a class, $150 a class. But, of course, you want to get started like a little less than that, maybe $50 a class. So for links to all of these and more information about these five kind of off-the-wall ways that you probably never thought of that you can make money, uh, head over to the website. That's commando.com. And in the top of the page, there's a link that says Kim's show. Just click that, and you got it. All right, still to come, how you can keep track of all your streaming shows that you're watching the easy and fun way here on The Kim Commando Show. How'd you like to hear about how I saved $456 in just five minutes? I used an app called Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Can you remember all the free trials and all the other random subscriptions that you've signed up for? 
Of course you don't. And that's what they're banking on. I love that with Rocket Money, I can see all of my subscriptions in one place. Then if I see something I don't want, I just tap to cancel and I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things that you just don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash Kim. That's rocketmoney.com slash Kim. Rocketmoney.com slash Kim. If you haven't already, make sure that you enter to win our $500 Amazon gift card. We're giving it away. Head over to commando.com slash win. Do it now. Uh, we're going to be giving away that gift card in just a few weeks. And so I'm going to make sure that you have your chance to enter. And by the way, when you do enter, there are some ways that you can get additional entries by doing some fun things like maybe subscribing to a podcast or signing up for a newsletter or liking us on social media. And so again, that address is commando.com slash win. Uh, Mark in Cedar Creek, Texas. Hello there, Mark. Well, hello, Kim. It's an honor to speak with you. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. What's going on? Uh, well, first I want to let you know I do listen to you every Sunday afternoon from 2 to 5 on, uh, what is it, uh, w, uh, WVOC in Columbia, South Carolina, via uh, iHeartRadio. And nice. I, I, I want to I also want to thank you for introducing me to the uh, Epson Eco Tank. I purchased one and I love it. Yeah, that's you know what? It's a fabulous printer, isn't it? It is. It works terrific. And I'm watching my ink levels not go down, and it makes my life so much easier than always <laughs> worrying about having to have extra cartridges lying around. Oh, and those cartridges are so darn expensive, aren't they? Crazy. Uh, they are. That's why they sell the comp the printer itself so cheap because they know they've got you know a, a market for their their ink cartridges forever. So um, I want to thank you for that. Um, the reason for my call today is I am creating some uh, basically final documents that I need to uh, type up and print out. Um, mm -hmm. And some of the documents are going to have very sensitive information about where assets are located, how to access uh, uh, liquid act, uh, liquid assets, etc. And I want to know if there's a way. Once I first of all type it up, which is on a computer, and then I'm going to be printing them out. Is there mm -hmm. a way to delete these documents so that they are completely deleted, as opposed to just freeing up computer space? You know, worrying about hackers sure. and. That sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's you know it's it's a it's a it's a valid concern, Mark. Um, a couple of things that you can do, and we're going to go through these fairly quickly, and then we're going to make sure that all this is on the website for you to follow it and give you the links. But you know, number one is that you can use what's called a, a shredding tool, and these are programs that will overwrite the data on your hard drive. And so this way, the whole idea is that. Even though you delete a file, you know it's not gone for good totally, right? It's just sitting there and waiting until something else overwrites it. And then once it Correct. gets overwritten, then that data is gone. So a couple of tools like Eraser, another one's called Secure Erase. Uh, another option is you can encrypt the documents before you delete them. So you encrypt them before you delete them, and that makes them unreadable. Um, and there are different tools for that for use encryption. Windows has uh, BitLocker. And then there's also another one called, I think, Veracrypt. Uh, you could also wipe the disk, and that will overwrite that free space. CC Cleaner does that fairly well, but just be careful sometimes. I'm getting a lot of complaints about the recent version uh, from some reason. And also disk wipe. Uh, you could physically destroy the hard drive. But I think probably your best bet is that you type up all these documents that you want, okay? okay. And then, then you encrypt the files, and then after you encrypt the files – that's when you remove the files so that this way nobody will be able to get that data that you've been typing up and what's in there. And, you know, this way it's all just gone for good. Again, we're going to write all this up and make sure that's on the website. So in case you need the links to these tools as well as some more information, you know where you can get it. That's at commando.com.
Hey, by the way, if you need any links to any of those file shredding programs that I mentioned, just hit the website. Of course, that's commando.com. All right, so how many different streaming shows are you watching? Okay, Yellowstone, there's 1923. There's, oh gosh, I can't even think of all the ones on or Netflix. The list just goes Stranger Things. The list just goes on and on and on. I'm trying to think of all the ones that I'm watching. Actually, I've kind of stopped watching some streaming shows. I just felt like it was just becoming too much of a time suck to like say, where, when are the new episodes? But I will tell you a streaming show that I absolutely loved, George and Tammy. If you're looking for kind of a true story to watch, George and Tammy's it. It's about George Strait and Tammy Wynette. Five episode. I enjoyed every single one. All right. When you start talking about all these streaming shows, you know, it's always hard to know like when a new season will drop. And a little fun fact, there's about 150 channels and streaming shows to watch. Wow. Okay. So what you want to do is look at a site called Real Good and Just Watch. They do basically the same thing. You can check the channels and the streaming service that you have. You add the shows and the movies that you watch. You want, might want to check out. And then you're notified when new episodes are coming or when they drop. Now, either Real Good or Just Watch works on any show and any upcoming movies that you'd like to see. And by the way, Real Good is real, like movie real, R-E-E-L, Real Good, and then also Just Watch. I prefer Just Watch, but I like to give you a couple of options just in case. And you find more information about that, too, over on the website. I'd like you to do me a favor. I want you to tell at least three friends about this show because every single thing is now a tech thing and you can find me at commando.com. Drew and Jonathan Scott here to tell you that American Family Insurance wants to protect your dreams. So whether you're at home singing in the shower every note or prefer singing your heart out in the car like Drew cruising you can save up to 23% when you bundle your home and auto insurance with American Family Insurance. Get a quote or find an agent at AmFam.com. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. Visit AmFam.com to learn how discounts may apply to you. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, S.I. and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin.